Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Arkansas, from Joe, N5MIG. And he asks, will you explain the difference between loading coils and traps? It has been my experience that HF antennas with loading coils will have a higher Q than HF antennas with traps. Actually, they both kind of work on the principle of resonance. You can have the same thing happen. Now, first of all, let's understand that something isn't either a loading coil or a trap that can go both ways. And I'll, I'll give you an example of that with the real-world commercial antenna, which is the Alpha Delta DXEE. Now, let's look at the whiteboard. An antenna that is too short, in other words, less than the quarter wavelength or half wavelength, and is, I'm going to do this for a vertical, too short at the bottom. This will look to your tuner as though it is a capacitor. We usually say it's capacitive. Okay, so if you look at the input impedance, it's going to be capacitive. There will be a phase angle. It will not be zero. What you can do to fix that, of course, is add a coil. Now, you can add a coil anywhere in here. It's easiest to do it at the bottom. So if we add a coil, we are adding inductance. Now, how much coil do you put in there? If you want to make it for just one frequency, what you do is you measure the amount of capacitive reactance. And you want to get a coil here that has the same inductive reactance, except, of course, the sign will be different. It'll be the complex conjugate. And then what you have here is resonant. This becomes resonant. Okay, now that means that the inductive reactance matches the capacitive reactance as far as the feed point goes, and we have a resonant antenna. Now, you will recall that Q, or the quality factor, let's say the higher the Q, the less bandwidth. And the lower Q is more bandwidth. Now for an ordinary HF dipole, the Q is such, remember the Q comes up like this, comes down over here, and if the Q is less, we get less of resonant boost, and so we get something a little higher like this, and so on. Anyway, we want a Q such that this part covers the entire band, okay? You go with a higher Q, the bandwidth of the antenna will go down, and it may not cover the whole band. So a loading coil is just a coil and what we do i'm going to draw this horizontally here we've got an antenna this is too short now there are a number of reasons why it might be too short we don't have room for bigger antenna so we add a little bit of a loading coil at the bottom and this adds inductance to make the whole thing including this resonant so this is called the loading coil. Now the idea of loading goes way back to the era of the first, actually second, transatlantic telegraph cable. The problem with the cable is that it was a long, it was coaxial cable, and that thing was stinking long, like several thousand miles. Now you've got one conductor in here, is sitting inside another conductive, a conductive shield. And what do you have? You have capacitance. Okay, and so when somebody would key down, the signal would slowly rise like this. Okay, and that was terrible. That wouldn't work. A guy by the name of Pupin, Russian fellow, although he was in the West, 
P-U-P-I-N, came up with the idea, well, every so often in the cable, we're going to put little coils. Each one of these is going to have some reactants, and it's going to allow a much sharper waveform because the thing is closer to resonance. So it's got a long and glorious history. Mobile antennas, for example, on the back of a, a car, or often for HF put on the back, they will have a coil, sometimes a large one, and the antenna. Now, if this is too inductive, you can put a little capacitance in here if you want. Normally you don't. Okay? So that's what a loading coil is. A loading coil is truly just a coil and it is used to electrically lengthen an antenna. Now let's talk a little bit about traps. The difference between a loading coil as inductive reactants, okay, and a trap is that a trap is actually a tuned circuit. So we're going to make a tuned circuit by adding something across this coil. We're going to add capacitance. Now the way this works, this has a frequency response where it's going to respond to some frequencies. These are fairly low Q devices. If the resistance in this gets higher, the thing becomes even lower Q, but we're picking up resistance in the windings of the coil and so on. Okay, now let's suppose this is at 14 megahertz. And we've got an antenna and it's a dipole and there goes the other half. And now, what happens when a 7 megahertz signal confronts this? This thing right here is not resonant, and it acts as a short. And so, the antenna acts as though it's full length for 7 megahertz. But at 14 megahertz, this resonates, okay? This thing resonates. And when it resonates, with a fairly high Q, okay, you've got this bump here in impedance, and it won't allow the 14 megahertz signal to go beyond this point to any significant degree. Okay, so the antenna will appear to be only that long. That's how a trap works. These will be in resonance, which means that the X of the capacitance equals the reactance of the inductance. Okay? Now, I told you earlier that it wasn't necessarily clear what this would be. The DXEE, and I'm just going to show one, of, one side of it, the DXEE from Alpha Delta has a 40 slash 20 element comes out here almost full size for 20. Then it has a trap, and that trap goes just two more feet. This is the DXEE -E antenna, and this is the 40-20 element of it. You come out to here, you have a high impedance at 20 meters, okay? So this just acts up to here for 20. But this also is, acts as a loading coil because of the ratio of the capacitance to the inductance. It acts as a loading coil so that all you have to add is an additional two feet in your resonant on 40 meters. Now, what's the problem with this? To do this, you have to make a bandwidth choice. This is a high Q circuit. And so this is only 38 feet from end to end, okay, instead of the usual 66 feet. And that seems, that's nice, right? Well, not so. Not so nice because uh, what happens here is that the if this is 7 megahertz and this is 7.3 megahertz, the bandwidth of the 40 meter band is only about like this. Okay? So you can tune this, 
and put this anywhere you want it, but you can get the SSB general band or you can get your FT8 down here, but not both. Okay, and this is why I rejected this antenna for the reference station antenna because it did not cover all of 40 meters. Now, let's take a look at what's going on up here. If you've got a lots of coil, what happens between the coils, windings? Well, you've got a wire next to a wire that acts as a capacitor. You have straight capacitance in the coil that needs to be taken into account when you're trying to figure out what the coil, because you may want to go ahead and add a capacitor here, but usually I don't see those. What I see is coils that take, or traps that take advantage of the interwiring capacitance in here, so you have capacitance. So this will have a natural resonant frequency. And you still want this frequency to resonate at 14 megahertz, but if there's enough coil here, this coil will also act as a loading coil at 40 meters when the resonance of this thing is low. There's so much inductance in there that it shortens this part of the antenna right here. Now, that's a high Q circuit in order to do that. Now, I want to talk just a little bit about people's perception of traps. That would be a trap coil, and it is resonant at the frequency at which the capacitive reactance and the inductive reactance are equal, opposite sign. Now, the thing is that what you get inside any resonant circuit are what are called circulating currents. And they go back and forth. The capacitor exchanges energy with the inductor. And they go in opposite phase, so you get a resonant circuit here. And the voltage across this resonant circuit can get quite high. And then the ohmic losses in here start to rear their ugly head. So what do you get? You get a heat loss. Now there are some people who say, for this reason, that you should never use traps. Well, I kind of disagree. Go ahead and use the trap if it's what makes your circuit work. But uh, a lot of people have come up with very interesting ways of avoiding traps. Okay, Joe, I hope that answers your question for you, or at least leads you in the right direction. I didn't put much in the way of math in there. I implied a little bit about resonance where the inductive and capacitive reactants are equal but of opposite sign. So a coil, the loading coil, is basically just that, an extra piece of inductance that you put at the feed point of a vertical antenna to electrically shorten the antenna by quite a bit. It is the basis for how antennas like the buddy pole and so on work. They've got that great big coil. Wolf River Coils has great big coils too. With traps, what we want to do is have them resonant at a frequency where we want the antenna to, to electrically terminate. Now, if you go with a lower frequency, then it doesn't see the trap. It just sees it as a little bump. Now, depending on how you can construct it, it may see some, that at the different frequency, it will see a inductance. Now, if it sees an inductance, that will act as a loading coil, causing the rest of the antenna to be shortened so that you can get smaller antennas. You do need to be a little careful of that if you want to have coverage of that entire band because when you add inductance it will narrow the bandwidth even with uh, low Q coils. You don't want a low Q coil because that means there's resistance in there and the circulating currents will be turned to heat. So lots of things to consider. So you asked me a one and a half line question and I thought well this is a, a good opportunity to dive into the nature of traps and loading coils and how they affect antennas. And I've tested antennas that have loading coils. The ones that we construct ourselves here at Ask Dave World Headquarters is uh, usually just straight wire and we've got out in the backyard some masts with pulleys on them so we can pull the antennas up and down. And I've got a video coming up of a review of a new mast. So there you have it. 
Please subscribe, click like. Please join us on our Thursday evening live streams. And you can support this channel financially by going to patreon.com slash ke0og. Until we next meet, 73.